What's up Money Chub? Welcome back to another stock analysis video and in this video we're talking about BlackBerry. Now BlackBerry is a stock that I was fairly bullish on towards the end of 2020. I felt that leading into 2021 there were a couple of potential catalysts that could drive the stock price forward over the next couple of years. That being said, we have seen a few additional quarters of financial data. And since then, I have drastically changed my mind. In fact, I have a completely new strategy around the stock. So I'm gonna be talking about that in this video. But first, I'm gonna be walking you through my detailed 18 point checklist on the stock. This is of course taking into account the latest quarters as well as uh, some of the updated news around the company and the stock. And uh, then at the end of this video, I'm as always going to give you my personal prediction in terms of where I think the stock is headed. But before we do that, let's quickly go ahead and look at the historical pricing. So the stock really hasn't done well over the last year. In fact, it's down 43.75%. If we look at the last uh, six months, down 18.51%, and it has retreated 12.17% over uh, the last month. Now quickly looking at the volatility, the 52 week high touched over $20, $20.17 and it's fallen back to $7.40. Now of course last year I spoke about BlackBerry once or twice. My big uh, discussion around the stock really happened in 2020 where I thought that there was a lot of potential and that the company was really looking to reposition itself. But we'll come to that in a second. Let's firstly look at what some of the analysts are saying around the stock. So simply Wall Street believes that the stock is currently undervalued about 15%. Now, if they look at some of the additional factors, they talk about the fact that uh, trading 15% uh, below their fair value estimate, the revenue is forecast to grow by about 13% per year. And uh, the company is currently unprofitable and it's not forecast to become profitable over the next three years. Shareholders have, of course, also been diluted, especially in the last year. Now, according to uh, some of the analysts on tip ranks, looking specifically at the price targets in the year ahead, uh, we have a high price target of 850, average of 774, and a low of 745. So a pretty tight band. Uh, doesn't seem to be much prediction in terms of way of a major sell-off. Now, looking specifically at the ratings on buy and hold, uh, there is uh, one hold rating and three sell ratings out of the four analysts. So I think so far, most people are feeling that uh, there is still quite a bit to be proven by BlackBerry in terms of the revenue numbers. So heading across to uh, one of the articles out on the street, and I think this very much sums up exactly where the investor sentiment is at the moment. Talk about the fact that BlackBerry is now competing in several markets with excellent growth prospects over the next five years. And this in fact was one of the reasons why I was very bullish of this on the stock in 2020. I felt that BlackBerry was doing an exceptional job at repositioning themselves uh, and especially the markets that they're looking to do that in are certainly huge growth potential markets. Now they also talk about the fact that the company needs to demonstrate that it is capable of generating consistent revenues with its new technologies. Until then, it's too early to tell if it's valued fairly. And I think this speaks to exactly why I've changed my strategy on the stock. I've seen four additional quarters come through since I did my last uh, review, or should I say my first review, on why I felt BlackBerry might be potentially a good buy. Those four consecutive quarters, although there has been an improvement, it certainly isn't what I was looking for. And that is really made me start to question where my money should be placed and obviously do a deep dive. Now, that's something I'm gonna be talking about towards the end of this video and exactly what my strategy is. But in the meantime, uh, Wall Street, of course, of course, is pretty bearish on uh, BlackBerry. And honestly speaking, they've been bearish since day one. Uh, BlackBerry really hasn't excited anybody on Wall Street at this point. And uh, they talk about the fact that the target uh, is largely derived from the company's underwhelming revenue generation and they're talking about that target of 775. Much of the stock's high volatility has also driven more of the meme appeal than of course changing opinions on the valuation in terms of the actual fundamentals. And of course this is one of the plays that some of the meme investors got involved with and I actually felt that they probably got it right in this instance and I would still rather see the meme investors you know, push forward on a company like BlackBerry than say, for example, uh, something like uh, GameStop or some of the other meme players that have been involved. Because I really do believe that BlackBerry does have something. There is something here that we're not gonna see for a long time still. And so I still believe that BlackBerry still has fundamental value. I don't think that the company is just gonna disappear. 
I think that they are repositioning themselves. But the question is, how long is it going to take? What is the cost going to be? And for how long are investors going to be carrying losses? Well, let's just quickly head across to the stock sheet and see and talk about exactly what I've been looking at. So first of all, this market cap, we're looking at 4.72 uh, 4.732 billion. Now coming to the 10 year price, we can see uh, 15.07 currently trading at a press level at 8.23. Now looking at this P ratio, non-existence of course, and that is because there is negative margin. Equity is the one thing that has saved BlackBerry to this point. Uh, 2.5 billion, which represents an equity to market cap of 53%. And that is the thing that's actually kept them alive at this point. Free cash flow, of course, in the red. And if we come down to the key ratios, debt to equity, whilst it is above our personal um, point of 40%, obviously our benchmark is 40%, uh, but uh, at 48%, I actually feel it's uh, not being managed too badly. The big thing that I think is a problem is on the short term, uh, situation on the cash flow. None of their free cash flow available. They have no free cash flow uh, to cover any outstanding debt. So I think in the short term, there could be a significant problem for BlackBerry. Now looking at the price to sell and price to book, uh, those figures are pretty high in, in, in terms of a company that isn't profitable at this moment in time. The beta is tracking the market. So this stock is currently moving pretty much in the same direction as the market. Uh, insiders are holding 1%. Uh, institutions are holding 39%. And this, of course, is where the meme investors have climbed in. And this is pretty much what's got the tiger by the tail. Uh, there is 5.92% of all shares outstanding are shorted on a ratio of 3.72. And of course, as this number has climbed, the meme investors have got behind the stock. And honestly speaking, I actually think the meme investors are doing a pretty good thing here long term because BlackBerry is doing some really, really impressive things to reposition them to reposition the company reposition themselves for future growth as i said though the problem is how long into the future is that going to take and as we can see they are burning cash return on equity return on asset return on invested capital all of which is in the red current ratio is actually surprisingly not bad 2.27 now moving on to the year and years and this is really where i have my issues so when i first reviewed the stock we were pretty much sitting over here and i felt that uh, based on the results, looking back over here, I felt that there was some real potential looking at the future growth prospects. And we were, of course, focusing on the off book factors. I felt that there was some real opportunity here uh, for BlackBerry to come in and, and, and really do something significant in the market and potentially turn that revenue story around. However, as we can see, it has been a dismal, dismal performance for the company. In fact, they went back the uh, previous year, this is of course in 2020, and uh, in 2021, we can see in the last trading 12 months data leading into 2022, it really is not looking good. Total revenue is down, gross profits down, operating income is in the red, net income is in the red, uh, operating cash flow is positive, but it is very small, and free cash flow is in the red, leaving them with a negative earnings per share. But I do have to point out the earnings per share has, uh, of course, doubled in terms of its uh, its position. So they're actually doing half as bad as they were last year. That's a better way to put it. Uh, they are currently sitting at 0 0.84. They were sitting at uh, 1.97 negative. So uh, 0 0.84 negative versus 0 0.197 there is an improvement, but honestly, they are still in the red. So that is a big, big issue. And like I said, for me, these top line and bottom line revenues that have constantly continued to go back. I mean, there was a glimmer of hope here on the top line revenue, total revenue and gross profit actually grew uh, year on year, but they just fell back uh, in the last trailing 12 months. And so because of that, I really think it's time to look at BlackBerry and say, well, you know what? There's probably better places to allocate capital. There's no doubt about it that this company is gonna be worth something in the future. I just don't know if it's worth taking that speculation and holding on a lot longer than maybe actually needed uh, to actually get those results. So coming down to our 18 point checklist, just very quickly, we can see the stock really isn't doing well. Assets uh, are versus liabilities. Of course, the equity is fine. Current ratio is greater than one, but pretty much on everything else on the fundamentals, they're tanking. And the same on, on uh, momentum. I mean, there's just nothing there and equally the same on growth. So they haven't been able to prove growth. They haven't been able to prove momentum and they just don't have the fundamentals 
at the moment. Now moving down to our valuations, we can see free cash flow. Well, it's impossible to give them a value against free cash flow because they are in the red and pretty much the same on the earnings per share. So if we are gonna look at valuations here, it is going to be based a lot on the general consensus from the market. It is also gonna be looking at forward earnings, taking into account where the company has been over the last 12 months versus of course how they've performed in the total four years preceding that. And honestly speaking, it just isn't looking good. So that being said, there could be some big catalysts. I've spoken about this in the previous video, so definitely go and check out some of those videos. You can go and search for BlackBerry from the uh, homepage of our channel, see some of the videos that I put out that goes into detail why I think or do believe that there is potential value in BlackBerry in the future. But from a strategic capital allocation perspective, if you are looking to make an investment into BlackBerry, there's gotta be better investments in the market. And so my personal strategy has changed. I uh, moved my capital allocations out of BlackBerry. Uh, fortunately, I didn't lose too much money in the process. In fact, on some of the trades, I actually made some money. Uh, so I probably came out of it just slightly under uh, profit. And I've taken that money and reallocated it into Nokia. Now, of course, Nokia, and BlackBerry are the sort of two dinosaurs of the industry that are seen as these dying archaic institutions that are really trying to reinvent themselves. And so I think Nokia is long-term a better play than BlackBerry. That being said, I think BlackBerry still has some really good things on the cards. I think there is potential and I certainly hope they do succeed. I mean, I would hate to see BlackBerry fail as a company and as a brand. Uh, that being said, if you are allocating capital, you've got to make the smart decision, and that has to be Nokia every day, Monday through to Sunday. And uh, of course, Nokia still has a lot to prove. Uh, it's not like they're perfect. Their fundamentals are still, in some instances, on a little bit of shaky ground, but certainly a lot better than where BlackBerry currently is sitting. In addition to which, I think their business is potentially a little bit more future-proof than where BlackBerry is headed. They're doing some very innovative things in the, in the 5G space. Uh, in fact, they have a technology which they are really driving into the marketplace that nobody else has. And uh, because of all of that and the IP that goes into it, I've just got to say Nokia has to be the logical play here. So uh, yeah, just coming down quickly to the verdicts, uh, let's talk about this fundamentals, weak momentum and growth non-existent and uh, the analyst price target sitting at 774. And I've got to say, I think 774 is probably about fair on the stock. Uh, so that means if you're staying in the stock, uh, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of money. That being said, sentiment could surprise us all. We could have another ridiculous year like 2021 and the price could more than double. But here's the bottom line. It does not make sense against the current set of fundamentals. So while sentiment may surprise us all, I'm looking at fundamental value Fundamental value, I believe the stock is gonna be worth about 7.74. Unless BlackBerry can do something drastically different and over the course of this year, start driving some serious revenue, start producing some bottom line, then it's gonna turn the stock around and it's gonna turn around very quickly. So BlackBerry will certainly continue to stay on my watch list. I think they have some emerging technologies and of course some IP that could be worth something in the future, but for now, I think Nokia is the better play. So guys, if you have any questions or comments on the video that I've just put out, don't be shy, get involved in the comment section down below. In addition to which, if you'd like to see more content like this, check out some of the videos coming up on your screen shortly. You can also head over to the homepage of our channel. It's an absolute treasure trove of content, lots of playlists for you. And uh, you can go and check out some of those that we've created. And uh, as always, if you are new to the channel and uh, you're thinking about a place where you'd like to get good information about investing and uh, you know potentially growing your wealth, then you might be in the right place. So you know, watch some of our videos and if you like our content, consider subscribing because we have a really great community that we've created on here. And as you'll see in the comment section around most of our videos, people are very actively engaged on the content that we put out. So uh, don't be shy, get involved.